So today we're going to be talking about how to declutter that mail, all that junk mail, everything that comes to you. It just seems like we're overrun with mail. And we're also going to be talking about how to declutter your email. They kind of go together. We're going to go through it coming up next. everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue where we talk about how to make money, save money, and create a retirement from nothing. Well, we've been talking all summer about decluttering and we really can't talk about decluttering unless we address the mail. It seems like there's this never-ending river of junk coming to our house that sits around and clutters things up. So I have some simple solutions for you to really get a handle on getting that mail decluttered, keeping things neat and tidy, and not letting it get out of hand. Now one of the most important things you can do is the minute mail comes into your house, deal with it immediately, either daily or weekly. Now I have a post office box. I don't have mail that comes to my house um, I do live rurally, and yes, I do have a mailbox, but it's not exactly secure. So I have a post office box, and I go pick up my mail about every 10 days or so. I certainly don't do it on a daily basis. And when I get that mail into my house, I immediately sit down and go through that mail. Now, your goal really is to touch the mail once or as few times as possible. <laughs> And it's really helpful to have your recycle bin or your trash bin right there where you come in and you can immediately sort your mail. I immediately throw all the trash mail away, the junk mail, the flyers, the circulars, just throw those away. I immediately go through the bills that come in and I put the bill, the return bill in the envelope or I set the actual bill aside to be paid online or via check everything else I toss. They send you extra envelopes, they send you newsletters and extra offers. And I mean, there's a lot of junk that comes with your bills. Just toss all that immediately. Now let's talk about things like cards. Uh, whether these be Christmas cards, birthday cards, people send you cards. A lot of people still do that. Even if you get like an arrangement of flowers or some sort of gift delivered, there will often be a card with it. You may love to keep those cards. But the only reason that card would end up seeming like clutter is if it didn't have a place to go. It is really great to have a little, you know those little plastic school boxes? To have a little box, you can immediately put that card in or if you want to set it out and display it like at Christmas, then the minute Christmas is over, you can either get rid of that card or if there's something meaningful on that card you want to keep, you can put it into your card box. Having a place for that sort of thing stops it from being cluttered, stops it from sitting uh, or just being stuck in a shelf or being stuck in a drawer or anything like that. And ever so often you can go through that box of cards and decide what you want to keep. Now sometimes in the mail too, you'll get an invite or an, an, an announcement of some sort of event that you may want to attend. If it's something I want to attend, I'll immediately put that in my phone, on my calendar. Uh, number one, I'm really likely to forget it anyway if I don't do that. <laughs> but then I can immediately get rid of that announcement. If there's something on that announcement I, I might need like an address, I'll take a picture of it with my phone and then I will get rid of that clutter. So I have it if I need to access it, and if I don't, I can just delete the picture. No problem. <laughs> but really, when you think about mail, if you truly want to declutter, we have to talk about email at the same time. One of the reasons you get so much junk mail is because you've signed up for something online. Either you've bought, purchased something online where you have to set up an account, or um, you have gotten a discount online where you had to give them your email and your address. That is one of the reasons we get so much junk because they have our information. However, when you set up an account online, there will always be a series of boxes at the bottom of that account that will say, hey, uh, and they're usually automatically checked. 
and they'll say, we want to send you offers. Uh, can we uh, share your information with our partners? You never know who that really is, by the way. Um, can we send you extra information? There will be a whole series of little boxes that are checked that allows them to send you a bunch of junk, including promotional emails, flyers, catalogs, mail outs. They share your information with four or five other companies that do the same. And before you know it, you're buried in a mountain of more junk. So if you have to sign up for an online account, be sure you look for those boxes at the bottom and uncheck them. Don't allow them to send you all that stuff and it eliminates most of your problem. Now let's say you're already signed up. You can go into an account for any company you have, a shopping account, a, it doesn't matter what it is, what kind of account it is, and you can go into the account settings and uncheck those boxes. If they're sending you email, at the bottom of every email they send you, they are required to put a little link that allows you to unsubscribe. Sometimes you really have to hunt for that link, okay? It'll be way at the very bottom, it'll be a little click here, and it's tiny, tiny, and you have to hunt for it. But if you click on that link to unsubscribe, they will stop sending you so much email. It cleans up your inbox immediately. Now, as we're talking about inbox, one of the things I do is, you know, when you get a bunch of email, what is offers or spam and what is not. I don't even open those emails. Um, if, it's, if it's an email I want to keep getting, I'm not going to open every offer. I'm just going to delete it. I really try to only shop when I need something. I don't browse. That's why they're sending you the email. They want you to impulse buy. They want you to buy it because it's on sale. And we've talked about this before. If you're buying things just because they're on sale and you don't really need them, you are creating clutter. You are creating the problem that you're wanting to address. So you've got to address the behavior. And one way is to not browse, is to not look at those offers. Unless you need something that day, delete them all or send them to spam or unsubscribe from those emails. Now let's talk about catalogs. I know some of you love getting catalogs. You love to look through them, but that is just like browsing. You will get catalogs. Sometimes you'll get them just out of the blue. Someone shared your information with another company that sends you a catalog. It's always tempting to look through those. I would really caution you against it. Immediately put them in the recycle bin. You don't need to be browsing. It just tempts you to buy things you don't really need. And then they send you more stuff. <laughs> it's really kind of crazy how many catalogs we get these days when we're supposed to be paperless. When all of that information is online, you can go to their website and buy every single thing that is in that catalog. But they still send it to you because they want you to browse. They want you to impulse buy. And if that is not something that you want to do and you want to get a hold of your finances where you're not doing any more of that, put it in the recycle bin immediately. Don't look through it. Don't set it aside in a pile. Say, oh, I'm going to look through those later. That is just browsing. And browsing is not great if you want to declutter. It never is. <laughs> now let's talk about magazines or periodicals. Something like that that comes into your house. Um, I used to get two magazines. I cut it way down because I used to get a whole bunch. Uh, but I just didn't have time to read them and they would sit and it would look like clutter. And I just never quite got to them. And it was this combination of guilt. And I mean, I wanted to get to them, but I just didn't have time. So I cut them way down. I let those subscriptions run out. I did not renew them. If I want a copy of one of those magazines, I can go buy it at the store. But guess what? I don't. There's nothing in there interesting enough to motivate me to purchase it at the store. So why would I have a subscription to it? So really think about things you have a subscription to. Is it really adding value to your life? I mean, it may have neat stuff in it, but how often do you look at it more than once? How often do you do anything or cook any of the recipes or do any of the projects that you actually saw? How often does that happen? 
And if you wanted to, guess what? Those are all online. You don't need to have the magazine. So it could save you not only a bunch of time, but it will declutter if you don't have so many magazines. If you love magazines, and I'm one of those people that does, cut it down to the ones you actually read. Tell yourself you're going to read them quickly and do it, and then get them out of your house. For example, last year I was still getting two magazines. Um, and I really noticed one of them I never seemed to get to. It had great photography, it's very pretty, but I never seemed to get to it. So I ended the subscription and I thought, you know what, if I really miss it, I can always go back and renew that subscription. But I haven't missed it. The other magazine is something I'm always anxious to read. So as soon as it comes in, I usually sit down that day or, with, or by the weekend and I go through it and I'll go through it a couple of times. And then I either send it off to my folks because they love to read it too, or I'll donate it to a local senior center or other facility where people might be sitting around needing something to read, or I'll recycle it. I get it out of the house immediately. Once you have read those things and looked at those things, they can go. Think about how many times you actually go back through them. Not how many times you intend to go back through them. How many times do you? Really think about that. Is it worth that clutter? Most of the time, it's no. And those magazines can just pile up and pile up. You may have years worth of magazines stuck somewhere and they've done nothing but sit there and age. It's time for those to go and they can all be recycled. So go ahead and recycle those. And then really think about what you are choosing to bring into your house and if it really adds to your life or not. You can save yourself money, save yourself a lot of guilt by having things sitting around you don't have time for. You can immediately cut down on the amount that needs to be recycled in your house and feel much better about things because they're not sitting around cluttering things up. I hope these quick tips on decluttering mail and email together will help you have much less clutter even coming into your house and make your life much more peaceful. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and I'll see you next time.